let's talk about um, workflow. One of the things that I, I like about Audio Limited as a company is that it doesn't focus on other markets. It just in the it, sense of it doesn't have wireless for houses of worship. It doesn't have wireless systems for the theater market. Its sole focus and purpose is production sound. Right. And everything about Has that always been the case. So they've always yes, focused on that. Yes. And the uh, the everything about the A10 wireless is to get is is about workflow. And workflow is equally as important as the equipment that you're using. Um, because when you're in a pinch, you're in a time crunch, and you've got to get things running, you need, you, you need solutions, and you need them fast. And the A10 wireless uh, gets you there. So, Gabe, you've mentioned a few times it's a linear system. Can you elaborate on that? Absolutely. Linearity means that when the transmitters are in close proximity to each other and they're operating, um, uh, meaning that they're powered on, that... Uh, Intermodulation distortion products are not generated among the transmitters. And it's an effect that happens uh, with wireless in general, where uh, two frequencies, which is the minimum quantity of frequencies that are needed to generate intermods, uh, two frequencies that uh, are different uh, generate these byproducts called intermodulation distortion. And it happens. Uh, where the one frequency interacts with the uh, output stage of the other, of the frequency of the other transmitter and vice versa. And so basically you have uh, third order, fifth order, and in some cases even seventh order depending on the output power that you're running. So if you're running 250 milliwatt analog wireless, trust me, you're getting like fifths mm -hmm. and sevenths and just Too a much. lot of... Uh, intermods. If you're running things on low power, the intermods are, are, are reduced. Um, what Audio Limited has done in order to keep those intermods at a, at a minimum is to use high quality uh, amplifiers at the output stage of the transmitter in order to reduce the, the intermods. Now you can create them if you stick the transmitters together and you hold them like this, yeah. but th that's not how you use them. Basically the closest that you'll get the, bo the, the body packs would be um, let's say a reality show or a TV show in an interview where you have your body pack on your left side and I have mine on the right and they're close together. Well, in a nonlinear system, these two would be generating an intermod that you would have to coordinate around. If you do that with the outer limited systems, you won't generate any intermods, period. Okay. And so we have a screen. That screen is a screenshot of a spectrum analyzer and it's a uh, 10 megahertz span, meaning that the, you're looking at 10 megahertz of RF spectrum. Uh, those are 20 RF channels uh, next to each other and um, so without, any, without any uh, intermod. So you right. can get 20 channels? So it depends on how, on how you have the, the system set up. So in countries where the TV stations are divided, or the RF spectrum is divided in six megahertz blocks, mm -hmm. the maximum you can get in six megahertz is 15. Um, then I think the next jump is, I think like 17 in the seven megahertz range. And then if you're using the 20 megahertz, I mean the eight megahertz division, then you can get up to 20. And that's what that's, that screenshot shows. So the, all those frequencies are 400 kilohertz apart in a very, very uh, narrow window. So let's say you're in a city that has a high quantity of congestion and you're doing a reality show and you got to get six, maybe uh, six sometimes. channels, mm -hmm. 10 channels plus camera hops. Um, I'll, I'll show this a bit, a bit later, but uh, the process of setting up is get your least uh, agile, your least uh, selective wirelesses on the air first. And then because the A10 is extremely versatile and, and super wide band, just uh, do a scan, find an open slot, and put all your frequencies in there, and you're, you're good to go. What's the, um, for IFB use, what's yeah. the solution in the A10? Well, if you wanted to, you can put the transmitter input to line level mm -hmm. and take your X1, X2 output of your sound device's recorder, plug it in, uh, set your transmitter output power to 50 milliwatts, and then take your receiver, put it anywhere where you want the IFB to be located, whether it's on the camera, Video Village, or wherever you want it to go, and, and that would be the, 
That would okay. be the solution. So would there be any possibility in the future of a dedicated IFB receiver? That's another question that we received a lot too. So keep in mind, this is our first wireless, not our last. Yes, no. Just so <laughs> there, are a lot of, there are a lot of requests that are meant to know the mini transmitter, the uh, IFB receiver, the popcorn maker. Yeah, it's all there. Do that. Yeah. Uh, one question I've had from people looking to invest is the range. Ah, okay. So I'm going to start off by explaining that wireless doesn't mean range. Wireless means no cable, right? It's the freedom of mobility. But depending on the situation and depending on the wireless that you've been using, uh, you especially if you're using uh, transmitters in the 250 milliwatt range, range uh, you can enjoy significant range. Um, with digital wireless, notice that a lot of the digital wireless systems out there, both portable and rack mount, their transmitter output powers don't go very high. And that's because the, the, the output power doesn't translate just like analog. Um, you can have a 250 milliwatt analog transmitter, but I, the most I've seen on a, on a digital is 50. And we're unable to use 250 milliwatt in Australia, so... Right, in many countries, 250 is illegal, you need a special license. You need a site license. Right, yeah. right exactly. So um, the rough comparison is that 50 milliwatts of digital would be somewhat equivalent to 100 milliwatts in analog, but it's just a rough comparison because there are other factors like the type of modulation um, and other things that, that, can, that would give you range. To compensate, notice that a lot of the analog systems out there, their minimum output power is like 100 milliwatts. Mm. Right? I'm talking about portable wireless, not rack mount. And so that's to compensate uh, that most of the receivers use these flimsy uh, quarter wave antennas. Right. So in my experience with the years of RF that I've been doing, I find that the best thing you can do uh, with any wireless is uh, to keep your output power where, uh, at a level where your intermods are under control. And because the A10 is, is linear, it doesn't matter if you're using 50 or 20. Uh, if you're using outdoors, I would go with 50 and then use some high quality half wave antennas. Um, so if you have your 688 SL6 in a bag, um, there are many uh, tricks and techniques. Like if you're using Orca, they got this little uh, antenna mount. Yep right, that clips onto the side of the bag, you get some electro SNA half waves on there and you are set, you are good to go. Um, uh, so with, whenever you have a really high quality half wave antenna, you're always gonna get better range than these little flimsy uh, quarter waves. So if you wanna get really good range with that, that's the way to go. I did this test with a sound mixer in LA um, and we did it on a location where we had his car in a parking lot and we had two passive uh, paddle antennas aiming uh, towards the length of the parking lot. And I had my, the, the body pack, I had it at 50 milliwatts. And I walked towards the other side of the building, completely out of the line of sight, um, where I was 90 degrees off axis from both antennas, and I didn't have a single drop. Okay. So, uh, it, you, the range that you get has a lot to do with how you set your RF output power and the type of antennas. And directional antennas are always going to give you a lot more, rob more robust signal. So since we're on the topic of range, I want to point out that this has four uh, meters of RF. Uh, the left side is for antenna one and the, the right side is for antenna two. So if I disconnect you know, this guy, I'll lose antenna two or antenna B, right? Just to give you an idea of where the, how the meters or what they represent. Now, there's something that you, that the A10 wireless offers that you're not gonna find on any analog system. And so, one of the ways that you realize that you're out of range is by the strength of your RF meters. When you got full bars, you know, you got full strength. Yep. And the moment you start walking away, those RF meters start to drop, to drop right? They start to go lower and lower and lower. So now we have, um, this one body pack tuned uh, to this receiver, and notice that the light just went from red to green. Yep. Okay? Uh, and that is something that you're not gonna get with an analog system, because there are situations where you're getting no RF meters, but you don't know how farther you go. How much more distance do I have? And with an analog system, uh, it tells you. It starts going, <laughs> and 
A, that audio is no longer useful for post-production. And B, that's your, it's, you're learning the hard way that you're out of range. So what IU Limited did was introduce a red light and a green light. And what it really represents is when, when the green light is on, error correction is in full effect. And when the red light starts flickering and the red light is on, uh, that's when you start, uh, error correction can no longer. What, what do you mean by error correction? So when error, error correction is something that all digital wireless systems have. Uh, our cell phones have it. Any digital transmission has error correction. And the error correction is there to correct any mistake in the transmission. And, not, and when I mean the transmission, the actual transfer of signal from the transmitter going through the air to the receiver. And one of the biggest things that can affect uh, range is, uh, which can make the error correction, put the error correction to work, is uh, lack of line of sight meaning that the receiver needs to depend on reflected signals mm. to make its way. So one of the ways that we created an RF, a very robust uh, RF reception, is by the uh, true diversity uh, scheme. Now, true diversity in theory means that you're either using receiver one for the microphone, and if receiver one drops, then it goes to receiver two, which is tuned to the same frequency, but physically on another antenna. We implemented uh, the two receiver uh, scenario a different way where we use both of them at the same time. So if you get a full RF signal on one antenna and half an RF signal on the second antenna, we're not leaving that aside. We're using that. You may get half a signal on one antenna and a quarter signal on the other antenna. Guess what? You're getting the most out of those antennas. So when reflected signals arrive at the antennas, the receiver may say, hey, I'm not getting everything that I normally get when I am in direct line of sight, I need to put this back together somehow. And the error correction is a digital word that the transmitter sends along with the bits of audio. And then the receiver receives that error correction word and says, ah, in the absence of data, this is how I reconstruct the signal. Okay. If you have too much error correction, you increase latency. You have too little error correction, and you get a lot of interruptions, and the, use, and the wireless becomes useless. So that's that perfect balance of all these parameters um, that we were talking about at the beginning that uh, make the wireless uh, so robust. So that red light tells you when error correction is exhausted and there, there's you know, no more correction to be done. So there, there have been cases where I've seen zero bars of RF and that green light is on and the audio is steady, and that's great. Now, conversely, what if you're shooting in a studio? And you're shooting in a studio, you're 10 meters away from your talent, and you do a scan, you, you, you uh, set up your frequencies, and then suddenly you start getting hits. Well, that green light will go to red if you get a hit. How do you find out with an FM wireless that you're getting a hit? With noise. Noise. And you start getting these spurious stuff. Or worse, you may have, like in the scenario of a reality show, where you don't know who's talking, right? And you get all your faders up, and then you get hit by an intermod, and that, that sound comes distorted, uh, super volatile, completely, un it's just useless, and post can't use that audio. Well, the intermods that may be generated between the A10 and another wireless, they will not carry audio. And the receiver will ignore it. An FM receiver, it's impossible for an FM receiver to ignore an intermod. But the A, you can, I can generate a third order intermod, put it on the same frequency of a channel of the receiver, and it will not light up because it knows that it's an intermod. And so let's say you're in that reality scenario, you know, your frequencies are clean, and then halfway in, you start seeing that red light turn on. There may be a case where that red light turns on and there's no drop in audio yet. But it's an indicator. Giving you the heads up. It's giving you the mm. heads up. That, hey, there's something on your frequency. And if you're in a bag, just walk closer to your talent and just stay out of the camera shot. Make sure that the audio still comes in clean. And then when the direct yell's cut, all right, now stop. Turn the transmitter off. Look at your RF bars. And you're going to see that noise there. So let me show you how that works. Um, I'm going to try to imitate uh, an out-of-range scenario by simply removing the transmitter of this body pack, and you're going to see that the red light... The of, antenna? Uh, the, yeah, yeah, the transmitter antenna. And notice that the light goes red. Now, if I put it on loosely, you see that a little bit of RF bars start showing up on the screen. You see that green light flickering? Yep. Now, if I put the antenna on a little tighter, now the red light starts to flicker, right? And that 
sometimes you'll get that red light turning on and off in an interrupted fashion. And that is your indicator that there's something on your frequency. There you go. You see that red light flickering? Yep. But the green light is still solid. So sometimes that can happen, but you won't see, you won't hear any interruption in your audio. But it's and showing you that there's something. That there's something on. Yeah. You do not have that with an analog system. Mm. There's no way. Because the receiver is always going to try to demodulate whatever you throw at it. Even if it's a digital signal, it will pick it up and then realize it can't demodulate it and it'll still step on your frequency, interrupting your audio. Here, that red light is an error correction indicator. It's a, it's a, it's a huge feature. It's a huge yeah. feature, exactly. So you want to know how far you can get? It all depends on how, you're, how you set up your frequency. But in Chicago, I have set up uh, the A10 wireless where I put a frequency intentionally on a DTV signal. I didn't get more than nine meters of range but I knew how far I can get before I got out of range and I started getting dropped because as soon as I started pulling away, that red light started turning on. So what if you're in a city where there's nothing useful? You got to choose your lowest frequency, the, the interference, the lowest interference possible. Use that error correction, that Stay. red light indicator. It's your best friend.